All right, guys, we got a uh, 1994 Dodge Caravan, 604 trans, 3.0 liter motor, because it has the hole here and the bell housing. The 3.3 does not have this. And the problem with this is you would drive this along, it starts out in first, it would shift to second, it would run away in second, and ultimately go into fail safe when you came to a stop, and then when you went to move again, the car would not move because second gear is fail safe. So what the driver would have to do was shut the car off, turn it back on again to erase the memory of the computer to forget why it went fail safe, and then it would go again. Uh, so probably the best way to drive this is to drive it low to keep it from going into fail safe. Um, so again, when this went into fail safe, it was second, had, has an issue with second gear, and second gear also is fail safe. So once it went into fail safe, the car did not move. Uh, so we've got an okay to pull it. We're going to open this thing up on the bench. Uh, so just to start out, this is an early start. These are your Prindle, the neutral switches. On the later ones, uh, 98 and up, it was incorporated on a valve body. There will be a cutout in the case here and a little uh, piece sticking up with an extra part of the wiring harness. Uh, there's your input speed sensor, your output speed sensor, and this is your solenoid pack. This actually already is the late style solenoid pack, but being that we're doing an overhaul, we're going to change it anyway. Uh, and that's really about it for the outside. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit closer with the camera onto the trans, and we're going to pull all the outside stuff off first before we get into the inside of this unit. So I'm just going to reset this. I'll be right back. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll take off the uh, output and the input speed sensor. Okay. If you hold these two sensors up, next to each other, because these are different. The, uh, this has the little tip on it, this is the output, this is the input, and also the threads are different. This is fine, this is more of a coarse thread. So that's the input and output speed sensors. These are your Prindle and neutral switches. I actually cracked these loose already. These also, same thing, they have fine, uh, fine thread and coarse thread, so you really can't put those in wrong. Now let's get the salt pack off. Solenoid pack. This uh, is the late style one, but this is going to be changed because I'm doing an overhaul. I don't want to put this one back. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the cover, which houses the transfer gears off. We're going to take the cover that houses the differential off, and we're going to take the two. Uh, um, side pieces out here, uh, uh, the tail and the cone, and we're going to pull the whole diff out. And then at that point, we're going to turn it up and take the pan and the valve out. Uh, all right, guys, so now we're going to pull the covers off.
this housing. Extension housing, everything's on both. Okay. Now let's see if we can get this tunnel off. Alright, there's just a wrist uh, axle seal here. Axle seal here. And this diff will come right out. This trans was probably worked on once before because this is a 94 and it has the what they call the bat wings so the uh, cross pin doesn't fall out. This has them already. Pump out. That is uh, eight millimeter volt. Uh, three sets of clutches in here. We'll open that up in a few minutes.
here. I got a piece of a stamp, right? Looks like it's for the uh, center support and houses the uh, second and fifth uh, clutch. I'm sorry, second and fourth. has to be in low. And I believe that is moving it. I believe it's that way. Oh, let's see. some stuff. This part 
here is, is within the linkage. Uh, so you need to put it in low to get it out. Even if you had to drop the valve body in the uh, car, you have to put it in low. All right, here's uh, some accumulators in the case. So let's get that uh, snap ring out. Let me get a screwdriver here. This is that broken snap ring. Another piece broke. All right, let's get a skinny screwdriver. piece of the snap ring. two for frictions. And now we gotta get the snap ring out. A couple more snap rings in here. Gotta just find the end. It's a little tight coming out. Let me get a different screwdriver. Okay. Let's see what we can do with this. Ready? This also has a um, this is beveled, and the bevel is going to face up. All right, so now the pressure plate. All right, now these 
pressure plates and snap rings are selective and you have to use them as a match set. Uh, pretty much when you put the, let me just get to the snap ring out and I kind of can explain it. All right, here's one low reverse clutch. And find the end. This snap ring is pretty flimsy. You can go in uh, either way. So this goes in the pressure plate with the, uh, it's uh, stepped. Yeah, it's stepped and the step faces down. So this snap ring would go, this snap ring would go, and then this snap ring would go. And this bevel faces up. So that's the setup. And when you buy a pressure plate, it comes with it comes with the snap ring. You get it as a set like this and that's how it has to be used because when you put this pressure plate in, when you put in the case, you put the snap ring in, the plate and the snap ring, this pressure plate cannot move. If the, if the pressure plate moves even a tiny, tiny bit up and down, the transmission will never work right and your clearances are not going to be right. So if you ever have to, if you have extra parts, you do one, you have extra parts laying around. Um, I was, of course, using this as a max set because, as I said, they are selective. But um, if you try something, uh, just make sure once once this plate is is installed in the case, you put the low reverse clutch in, you put the snap ring in, this flimsy one, then you put this in, and then the top snap ring. This plate absolutely can have no movement at all. If it has any movement, then it's no good. All right, so I just wanted to uh, mention that. Okay, now the low reverse clutch. Okay. Anytime I do one of these, I like to put a banner kit in it. Okay, so now we just have the rear planet. So the next one. We're going to take the transfer gear out and get the rear planet out. But I just want to get rid of some of this oil. I'll be back in one sec. All right, I'm back. Now we're going to get this uh, this off here. This uh, thing not the back. It's an inch and a half uh, socket. Okay. So this time I tap it in. a uh, spacer between the gear and the planet. You want to make sure this bearing is good. These bearings actually go bad. They do go bad. And we'll switch this around. And here is the planet. I want to check these gears for rocking. Actually this one seems like it is rocking a little bit.
or the gear. I don't know if really can pick can can pick it up. The gear actually is moving, not up and down, but it's moving like the the pins are worn. So this is going to be changed. Okay. thing we're going to take out, we're going to get my pliers. Okay, there's an accumulator in the case. That accumulator in case is the neutral drive accumulator. And it has the eyelid snap ring. Okay, there's the snap ring. Now this you saw the, the other ones where uh, the accumulator wasn't first in the springs. I pulled the springs up first in the accumulator. This is actually the opposite. Here's the cover. On the later models, this uh, became a molded cover. And the springs actually go in first in, in this one. So this would go in, this would go in like this. Spring first, accumulator, and it's a double spring. Then you just want to check the bore, make sure it's smooth, which it is. Okay, the next thing we're going to take out is, is a snap ring with the Belleville spring. And I just kind of take my snap ring pliers and squeeze it in there and, and start so it starts to come out. And then what I do is I get my seal puller. Let me just grab that. I get my uh, hook seal. Not enough yet. It usually just comes right out. Okay. And just it up. So here's that snap ring. Of course, you need to have something to push down when you're putting this back together. Now the piston is not going to come out until we take the fork all out. And there is two rods, two small rods. One of them pushes right out, and the other one has a has a cup. I gotta knock that out. Let's try this. I guess the cup. A new one comes in the kit, so. Okay, you know it's gonna be a little tight here. So the next thing we're going to do is take this gear off.
All right, so this is a 32 millimeter nut on here. Now we have the puller to pull the gear out. Not the right size. Maybe a 15. Okay, it's gonna work. So we'll go ahead and pull this gear off. Spacer and this very brace comes out. I don't like to keep these two together. And now let's take the pull here. It's got a spring on it. I put that aside on the basket. All right, so let's see if I can get if I can get this snap ring out to get that pinion shaft out. I got a special pair of snap ring pliers. These here for the uh, just for this snap ring. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You know what, I gotta just get my light. I gotta just find it, I'll be right back. All right guys, I'll uh, work on that later, getting that snap ring out. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and open up the pump. Stator. That looks good. Got four rings here. They'll be changed. Okay, let's check the pump and the pump. Uh, let's check the pump body and gears. Okay, these actually look in very good shape. Pump gears. Look good. Pump body looks good. All right, this is the. Uh, I knocked this piston out. I actually blew it out with air. Uh, so we have the outer D-ring, which is uh, intact. This is for second and fourth. And this is the inner one. Which is torn, which would give us our neutral condition uh, when it went to second. And when it went to fail safe, that's why it didn't move. So here is the issue right here, probably from the snap ring. Here's all the pieces to the snap ring. 
the snap ring broke, the thing probably came, the piston came up too high, and then when it returned, it knocked the chunk out. I thought for sure I was gonna find this little gear on this planet set, broken off, but actually, the, other than the rip on it, I think this planetary set is in good shape. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, let's get rid of these. We'll open up our large drum. Okay, here's a washer, which actually goes here. Four tab. There's also a five tab, which is uh, down in here. Okay, we're gonna bend this down a little. We're gonna pull the first set of clutches out. Actually, you know what the other is? Looks like the piece of the rubber. pieces of rubber, probably from that piston, a couple of pieces. All right, so this top is the reverse clutch. A lot of snap rings in this room, a lot of people get confused. Okay, reverse clutch, there's two. Don't look too bad. All right, the next one we're going to take is the overdrive. Let's find out where that end is. Okay, now this one, this snap ring is flat. There's another one on the other side of this pressure plate that's wavy. So this is the flat one. Then we're going to lift this whole thing out. Okay, this is the overdrive. They, they don't look uh, too bad, but again, uh, automatically what I do is banner kits in these 604s. Okay, and then we have a washer here, which goes here. And on the other side is this one. It actually sticks through the hub and splines on like that to keep the washer from turning. Okay, in here are two bushings. A lot of times these bushings wear out and Sonics has a one-piece replacement. You just got to make sure that you put it in correctly because the hole has to be exposed here when you knock the bushing in. There's like three different kinds. There's the early style, there's the late, and there's the late oversized. You mic this, you mic the, the, the width of this to see which one you have. Okay, and here's that five-tab washer I was talking about. It goes on this hub right here. Yep, there should be a bearing. Here's the bearing. It's going to sit right there. Okay, now let's get this other snap ring out. Okay, this is that wavy one I was talking about. So there's the flat, there's the wavy. The wavy goes in first, and then you put the flat one in. Okay, now we're going to get the pressure plate out for in between uh, the overdrive and the underdrive clutch. And this setup, let me just find the end. And this setup is the same as what's in the case. Meaning that the pressure plate cannot move. When you buy that pressure plate, that also comes with a snap ring. All right, I found my light, so let's see where the end of this snap ring is. Two screwdrivers. 
Okay. Okay. Okay, so here is that stamp ring. This is um, uh, a bevel, and the bevel is going to face up towards you when you put this back together. Here is the uh, pressure plate, and again, this has a this probably has a couple of steps, but the larger step on this pressure plate is going to face down. All right, now there's the other snap ring, just like in the case the flimsier one, and let's find that one. And that's right here. Okay, so again, you got the stamp ring, you got the pressure plate, and then you got the other stamp ring. These are sold as a set. And once you have the pressure plate in there, before you put the overdrive clutch in, if you kind of find something laying on the shelf, you got to make sure this pressure plate does not move, absolutely does not move. If it moves, it is no good. And here is the underdrive. And the clutches look, uh, you know, they look in good shape. They don't look too bad, but again, I like to uh, get a banner kit and put the banner kit in. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to pop this little clip out for this input shaft. Okay, a little clip for the uh, input shaft and we'll knock that out. Okay. You got three rings, you got a bushing in here, pilot bushing, converter goes in here. All right, so I'm gonna open up this uh, drum, um, but I'm just gonna pause it for one sec while I go over to the foot press. All right, so I uh, got this drum apart, I got the snap ring out, I should say. So here is the snap ring that goes on the top. This is your uh, balance piston. This is a little hard, so this comes in a banner kit, so it's going to be changed. Um, return spring. Okay, next is the housing for the balance piston. And this has a screened orifice, so when you clean this piston up and you hold it up to a light, you should see a little pinhole. You should see a little pinhole here when you hold this up to the light. That'll go like that. Now there's another snap ring, and this is one of the main reasons what I wanted to show you. Okay, this snap ring really can only go in one way. Okay, this way, this way here is completely flat. And this way, it has a kind of a bevel on the inside. Okay, that has to face up. You know, when you put it in, you squeeze it, and you put it in just like that. If you were to put it in this way, probably as soon as you hit uh, reverse or drive, this thing is gonna fly out, and that's it. So you gotta really look at this. The bevel is on the inside, and that's the way this, this faces up when you're putting this together. Okay, now, I'm going to put this up like this, I'm going to knock, alright, i got a better range right here, let's get this, okay. Alright, here is the housing, uh, you got a lip seal here, you got a uh, uh, a couple of uh, O-rings, ellipsial here, and these are the pistons themselves that will come apart. Ready? Now on this one, 
you have the Belleville spring here. You want to make sure that it is not cracked. And here's another orifice that once this is cleaned up, you have to see light through it. I hold it up to the sky, hold it up to the, the light, and you have to see light through it here. And this is your other piston. Uh, this one fits inside. There's really nothing special about this. There is a lip seal in here. And when you put this back together, so the clutches and steels go in right, you have to have an opening like that. You know, it can't be like that or the uh, steels won't, won't go in correctly. All right, another thing you want to look at, you want to make sure your splines are good. These splines tend to strip out. Uh, you want to just check your hubs real good. Sometimes this piece breaks off, sometimes the whole shaft breaks off. You want to change these two bushings in here. I always change them, I use the Sonics one. Uh, I press the bushing in. Okay, real quick on the mount body. Behind this plate, is the 1-2 accumulator. You want to take that accumulator out, make sure the bore is smooth, bring your finger along it, make sure the bore is smooth. Uh, and also in this valve body houses the solenoid switch valve which floats. So what I do on every old will do, if it's a 604, 42 RLE, 545 RFE, I take the valve out, I run my bench buddy uh, brushes through it, and I drop the valve in and it has to fall in on under its own weight. It's the Teflon coated valve. It has to fall in on under its own weight. Because those valves stick very easily. You can get the Sonics end plugs too, which uh, um, won't um, um, cock in the bore. And that's uh, really about it on this uh, 604. So we had the neutral condition when it went into second, which put it into fail safe. And then when the driver went to go, the car did not move forward and we have found a torn o-ring and the reason why we found the torn o-ring is because we found a busted up snapper and i believe this thing probably moved up too high you know with the one side was this wasn't even in so um the one side might have moved up too high then when it, when it returned it, it got cut And that's about it for this one. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I thank you guys for watching, and you have a great day.